Happy Earth Day! I am Janine Salmon. I am the state representative for House District 30 and I am excited to bring a little project uh, to you today, read a little story in celebration of Earth Day. April 22nd is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day and it is worth it to celebrate. So without further ado, I'm going to read you Diary of a Worm. Something I usually like to share with classrooms in person, but because we can't do that, I'm happy to share the story and this project to you on a video that you can share virtually with your classroom. This story is by Doreen Cronin. March 20th, mom says there are three things I should always remember. Number one, the earth gives us everything we need. Number two, when we dig tunnels, we help take care of the earth. Number three, never bother daddy when he's eating the newspaper. March 29th, today I tried to teach Spider how to dig. First of all, his legs got stuck. Then he swallowed a bunch of dirt. Tomorrow, he's going to teach me how to walk upside down. March 30th, worms cannot walk upside down. April 4th, fishing season started today. We all dug a little deeper. April 10th, it rains all night and the ground was soaked. We spent the entire day on the sidewalk. Hopscotch is a very dangerous game. April 15th, I forgot my lunch today. I got so hungry that I ate my homework. My teacher made me write, I will not eat my homework 10 times. When I was finished, I ate that too. April 20th, I snuck up on some kids in the park today. They didn't hear me coming. I wiggled right up between them and they all screamed. Ah! I love it when they do that. May 1st, Grandpa taught us that good manners are very important. So today I said good morning to the first aunt I saw. There were 600 more of them in line. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I stood there all day. May 8th had the worst nightmare last night. Giant birds playing hopscotch. Mom says I have to stop eating so much garbage right before I go to bed. May 15th, I got into a fight with a spider today. He told me, you need legs to be cool. Then he ran. I couldn't keep up. Maybe he's right. May 16th, I made spider laugh so hard, he fell out of his tree. Who needs legs? May 28th. Last night I went to the school dance. You put your head in, you put your head out, you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's all we could do. June 5th. Today we made a macaroni necklace, macaroni necklace in art class. I brought mine home and we ate it for dinner. June 15th. My older sister thinks she's so pretty. I told her that no matter how much time she spends looking in the mirror, her face will always look just like her rear end. Spider thought that was really funny. My mom didn't. July 4th, when I grow up, I wanna be a secret service agent. Spider says, I will have to be very careful because the president might step on me by mistake. It's a dangerous job, I told him, but someone's got to do it. July 28th, three things I don't like about being a worm. Number one, I can't chew gum. Number two, I can't have a dog. Number three, all of that homework. July 29th, three good things about being a worm. One. I never have to go to the dentist. Number two, I never get in trouble. 
for tracking mud through the house. Number three, I never have to take a bath. August 1st. It's not always easy being a worm. We're very small and sometimes people forget we're even here. But like my mom always says, the earth never forgets we're here. The end. Now that you have heard the story, I'm going to walk through and do a little project with you. Now this project is about showing you how to make your own worm compost. Now this can be done with your teacher in a classroom or it can be done in your backyard with your family. The great things that worms um, do for us in our, in our garden, they help provide nutrients in our soil. They help turn our soil, just like the book said. So when worms make their way through the soil, they also then um, eat things within our soil and their waste that they produce actually adds nutrients back to our soil. That provides great soil to put on over your rose garden, in your gardens, and things like that to put extra nutrients back to the things that you're growing that you're going to eat. So today, I'm going to just walk through. You can take a very simple container, and this container is just something we had used after a party. Ice cream bucket. After you have read, read, after you have read your Washington County Times, Instead of recycling it, you can actually do this and go about taking small shreds, stripping that, putting a little bit in water. You want to get them wet, but you don't want them to have them like drenching with water. So you want to make sure that it doesn't have a lot of water waste. Then you're basically just going to put, put that in the bottom of your container. Because just like in the story, Worms will eat newspaper. It provides a fiber for them. Now, it's not something that you and I like to eat, but to worms, this is a delicacy. I think one of the things that's really a couple things that even followed about and talked about in the book, too much water is not a worm's friend. They actually can drown, which is a lot of times why when after it rains a lot, and the, you see a lot of worms are up on the sidewalks or up on the street, that's because there's too much water in the soil and they need to get out of there in order to survive. So it is very important that while you keep your worm compost moist, you don't soak it with water. So it is great if you can get a little spray bottle or something like that to provide a little mist. So we have newspaper at the base, and that's, um, that's one of the bases. You can actually add a little bit more than that. So then some things that I will add is I'm going to add some soil. Now this soil can be, as you can see, it's like leaves and different things like that that are, it's totally fine. This is a worm's paradise. They don't mind leaves. They don't mind the dirt at all. This is their playground and their home all in one. So this is a good little project to get your hands a little dirty and get in there. So because this is a good size container, it's okay to add some, a good amount of soil because the worms are going to be, they like to burrow, right? They like to go it down a little bit. So um, it's important that they have a little space. Now, obviously worms are not meant and created to be pets. This is something to kind of give you an idea of what the worms do, but I wouldn't suggest leaving your worms in this kind of container all, all the time. This is just something to help you get started and get an idea of what it is like and how you make a worm compost. So now that you have some newspaper that's been wet, you have some soil and you have some leaves in there, the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and you can add some of your own food waste in there. Some things that you should not. Just like in the book, there are things that worms don't like. Worms do not like to eat meat. Worms do not like to eat citrus fruit. And you shouldn't put bread items inside a worm compost. Those types of foods just actually end up 
spoiling and can bring on pests and things and can create a negative effect. So no bread, no citrus, no meat for worms. Some great things that worms like are eggs, eggshells. So you can just take your eggshells, crumple that in there. The other thing that uh, worms do like, they like their caffeine. And so this is coffee grounds. So the coffee grounds can just be, ooh, these are warm coffee grounds too. So the coffee grounds are moist and they can just be spread inside your worm compost. Now, you can also put tea bags in there, but you, what you need to really make sure is they're not the mesh kind of tea bags, the plastic, because that plastic will never break down. So if you have loose leaf tea or you have a paper bag, those kind of things are fine in a worm compost. So now that you have some egg and you have some coffee grounds, I also had a little bit of lettuce that was like leftover from a salad that had gone a few extra days. And so you can sprinkle. If you're going to put something like some apple in there, I would recommend that you chop it rather small or cut it rather small because it will take a long time for the worm to break down that if it's too large. So it's better to try to break that down as much as you can. So just trying to cut it up a bit. Again, doesn't look like a great home for you or I, but this is a worm's paradise. So, so we have some wet newspaper, we have some soil, we have some dry leaves. You can even, you can even put a little grass from your lawn. Sprinkle that in there. That's perfectly fine. Then you get to find some worms. Now, if you can't find worms out in your backyard, sometimes you gotta dig down a little deep. Um, what you can do is you can find a um, pet store, fishing store, or there's a, you know, a farm store in like in Helvetia. They'll sell, sell, sell you red worms. So um, these I found in my yard. So, so you can see that lovely little squirmy guy. He's very excited to be going into his new little temporary home because I have, here's another one. Look at that, wiggling around. I actually, um, for my birthday one year, my husband actually built me my very own worm compost here in my backyard. So I have a larger one. We need to go and purchase some worms from that farm in Helvetia and get it started. But the, this, will, this will help get us started on a smaller level. Whoop, there's a big one, nice big worm. Yep. Oh, see, already starting to burrow down a bit. They're pretty excited. So there's that little wor that little wor wriggly worm going in there. See, look at that one. That 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 one is just they're starting to burrow down a little bit. They're like this is incredible. So, I have about four worms in there. Oh, there's a nice big one too. So I'll take this one and I'll put that in there. And again, you can do just sprinkling a little bit of water. Again, if you have like a, a little mister or anything like that, you can certainly do that. But it helps just to get a little bit of water. And if you have a lid, make sure that you either drill or cut some holes um, within the lid to put that on top to protect them from the heat. Now you can actually um, keep this on a porch. Uh, you don't want to store this or have this in direct sunlight. Um, so you want to keep it in a nice cool spot. But again, um, you can bring some little treats out for your worms and eventually um, you can also look online and it'll tell you how to make your own worm compost. This container right here is one that my husband made for me for my birthday, as I mentioned. So um, just has the lid and I'm able to put scraps in there and turn the soil over. 
can take some of that soil and add it to my garden areas when I'm growing our tomatoes and things. I can add that to it so it'll add extra nutrients for our soil. And also what's great about living in Hillsboro is the new composting. Now this isn't worm composting, this is actually food compost. And they gave you and provided this great little container for you. And so we can actually take that and put that in our yard debris. So that's kind of separate. And, and, and again, um, you don't wanna overfeed your worms. Don't feel like you have to put all your food waste in there. You can actually just put a little bit. And again, some grass clippings and things like that. So I hope that you have enjoyed this little project. I hope you enjoyed this story. And again, um, I'm Janine Salmon, and I'm really happy to say happy Earth Day. Get in there and get your hands a little dirty and enjoy the earth. Take care.